This video is a part two to the original video I did on this project, which was how to prep these wood slabs for smaller pours, filling up voids, knots, small defects, cracks, bug holes, that kind of thing. Again, just like that first video I did, there's not a lot of videos out there that go into a whole lot of detail about how this stuff is done. This is my process. It seemed to work for me. Um, there may be things I'm doing wrong or could do differently, but it's always a learning process. And if you've never done one of these before, it can seem a little daunting, but once you do one, one or two of them, it, it, things fall into place. So the purpose of these videos is to try to get you to that point where you can just get started and do one or two of them, and then you can figure out what works best for you and go from there. So uh, hopefully you like these. If you do have questions on how I prepped all this, that first video is on my channel, Whiskey River Slab Works. Go give it a watch if you're curious, but uh, we'll take you through the process here. First thing you're gonna wanna do before you mix any epoxy or anything is get your project as leveled up as you can. This one actually is sitting pretty well. Some of them can get a little weird on you. Do the best you can. If you can't get it perfectly level, that's all right. That's why we did this. That gives you a little bit of buffer, so if you can't get it quite leveled up, if you do need to add a little bit more to get one end up above flush, that's what it's there for. As far as picking a brand of epoxy to use, it's kind of up to you. Pick whichever one you think the bottle looks cool. I mean, they're all about the same. I've had good luck with this Wise Bond. One thing I do want to pass along though is make sure you get the correct epoxy for what you're doing. So if you're doing thick pours or castings, there's an epoxy for that. If you're just top coating stuff, there's an epoxy for that. Some are good for thicker or thinner windows of how deep you can pour it. Make sure you read and you pick the right one for your application because if you use the wrong one, you're not gonna get the results you want. Chances are good, it probably won't even harden up right. They're designed for a specific use, so just keep that in mind. Before you mix, the first thing you wanna do with this epoxy is make sure it's warmed up to the working temp that they recommend. Everyone's a little different. Wise Bond is 70 to 85 degrees. I've got this pesky thermometer that's in Celsius. It's about 26 degrees Celsius, which is 79 degrees, so we're good to mix. Always make sure this stuff's in that working window. Don't want it to be too cold. You don't want it to be too hot. There's a reason for it. Follow the instructions. Follow the instructions. Can't say that enough. Time to mix. A lot of guys you see will mix this stuff with a paddle mixer, um, and you can do that. These small little batches, I don't do that with because it introduces a lot of air if you're not careful. Now, if you're doing a pour that you got a ton of a metallic in, um, the air really doesn't matter. I mean, you will still see bubbles. There's still times that they'll show up, but it's definitely not as, as bad as if you're doing like a clear casting or something that's just got a, a tint of color in it. Those bubbles will be pretty tough to get out and it'll be a constant battle against them you'll have to do a lot of babysitting so if I'm just mixing up small batches I'll just mix this stuff with a stir stick um, for whatever they recommend the mixing time is usually this stuff it'll get a little cloudy in the beginning when you first start mixing it but as you mix it you can see it's getting crystal clear there's still some air in there you're never going to keep it all out of it but a big paddle mixer on something this small will definitely pound a lot of air into this stuff. Make sure you scrape your sides, scrape the bottom, get everything mixed in real well because you don't want to pour this stuff out and have some half mixed stuff come out of the very bottom of it because you're trying to stretch it out. Once the epoxy is thoroughly mixed for as long as they tell you to mix it for, that's when you're going to add your color. Most of these epoxy have pot life set. Are, are huge hours so you've got plenty of time it's not a race against the clock to try to pour everything in all at once and mix it um, every everybody's got their own recommendation for what to use how to use it and how much to use it so make sure you kind of research that I'm using this uh, deep emerald gonna be a deep green epoxy that the customer wanted um, this stuff I've never used before so we're gonna give it a shot in this video um, 
but this will give a clear tinted look to the epoxy. It's not going to be that heavy metallic that you see a, a lot of. This will actually be, this can actually be translucent depending on how much of that stuff you put in there. Um, but like I said, when you're putting this color in, do it after you've got everything mixed real good. Follow the manufacturer's recommendations. Um, I, I'm sure you can add too much to uh, epoxy and it won't cure or may affect it some way. So be cognizant of that. Well, I still managed to make a mess, even though I was trying to be careful. Stuff happens. It's not the end of the world. Um, I try to wipe that up so it doesn't soak in uh, as much, um, just depending on, again, the video that I did before. This kind of explains a little bit better why I clean that up, but this epoxy soaks in so far like any finish does. So just depending on what you're going to top coat with, it, that could be a concern. Um, so I, my, my suggestion is to just clean it up. If you make a mess, do the best you can, get it cleaned up. It's gonna happen. But now the next part, after you get this done, is for a while you're gonna be popping bubbles. All I use, propane torch. You can use a heat gun. I've never used one, but I, I've seen guys use it. But uh, simple as this. There's the nerve of the road. This stuff's pretty resilient when it comes to torching them bubbles. Don't be scared of it. Don't get in there real tight and, you know, really hammer on it. I, it takes a lot of abuse to, to screw it up, I believe, at least in my experience. But um, just go over it. Every time you see some bubbles, run over with that torch, pop them bubbles. And uh, that's pretty much the long and short of it. The next little while, you're going to be babysitting this thing and popping bubbles and adding stuff as you go you can see in this right here so this was one of these small cracks i was telling you about that are kind of tough to fill because it's hard to chase the air out of them it's so it's so small that it's not like a big void where you can start at one end and pour and the air just kind of works its way out you know the fluid will push the air out with this you're pouring all that fluid right on top of the air and the air's got to fight its way out so be mindful of that because you're gonna the, the, you're gonna mess with these little things more than you'll ever mess with that. That's the easiest one to do. These bigger ones, you'll pop bubbles in them once or twice. That's all it'll be. These smaller ones, you're gonna ha kind of have to fight against to get all the air worked out. Just be patient. Remember, it can all be fixed. You just might have to do some more work to do it. So don't be scared of it. Give it a shot, and you'll figure it out quick enough. I hope I covered some questions that you might have had. There's, there's really not much to cover on the actual pouring of it. Um, the prep work is everything. If you do a good job prepping, this part is usually pretty fun. Um, feel free to leave a comment if you got other questions or tips or see things that maybe I'm doing wrong or you do differently. Um, it's always a learning experience. It's the only way you get better. So uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Like and follow for more.